All right, so let's uh, talk about lights. Here you see I've added just a simple uh, point light. And the only thing we're really using this for is to get the location of the light that we are creating here in Blender. The light will be a parameterized light. <clears throat> And the only information that X-Plane actually takes from this point light that we're placing is the location in our 3D file. Everything else is now on this uh, X-Plane section over on the right hand side. And you'll see I've set the type to, the type to param uh, for parameter. And then there are specific names for each of the lights and I'll leave a link in the description for where you can find the specific names that you're looking for and then uh, you put in your parameters now here I started to type the parameters after the name which isn't where they go so uh, you'll see I'm actually gonna remove that and it goes into the spot under the name which actually says parameters also, to find those parameters, um, it's a little bit of trial and error, but uh, on the link that I'll leave in the description, it'll show what each one of those values uh, actually means so that you know how to place it. And then there's just one space in between each value. So for example here, um, I've started with the airplane uh, landing glow and so that's part of our landing light. Um, so using parameter parameterized lights, you actually use a couple different uh, pieces to create your light. And so I've, I've got um, right now, one of those lights is the core and one of those is a glow and I've set them up one on each side so that I can export and see what it looks like um, inside of X-Plane and that just helps me kind of get a feel for the size and so here you see I just quickly added um, my lights object so I just create a separate object that is purely for the lights um, and so I'm just quickly adding that in in Plane Maker here. But as I was saying, you'll create um, multiple uh, lights that make up one specific light. Um, for example, on the landing lights, we'll actually use four lights. We'll have a landing core, a landing glow, a landing flare, and then a landing spill. And so you'll actually have four lights there that are making up uh, the landing light. So you'll see there I just uh, duplicated that one more time. Um, so now there's actually three lights in this scene at the moment. And so this last one is the landing spill. Uh, so landing underscore SP. And that's what actually casts the light onto the ground. Um, the other ones are so that you can see what the light bulb itself kind of looks like and the flare and things like that. But the spill, um, you can't look at it, but it is what actually puts the light on the ground. And so that's why you need multiple pieces. So here you can see that I've got, I've jumped into X-Plane and the, uh, the glow is obviously way too big. And so um, going in here and looking at that, I know that, okay, I need to go back and I'm, I need to adjust the size of the glow. You can also see that the spill was not actually spilling on the ground. And uh, so I go back and I try and adjust those parameters. So here on the core real quick, I'm, you see I'm adjusting. So that last number there is the size and uh, so I adjusted the size on that one and uh, then I just export the object and jump back into X-Plane 
and uh, so I go up here, reload current aircraft. Now, any any uh, changes to your uh, OBJs, your uh, anything that you've made in Blender or your textures or all that, you have to do the developer reload aircraft and art. It considers OBJs to be part of your art. Um, but so here you can see the difference between one of those is the core and one of those is the glow. And uh, so you can see that the core was nice and small but the glow was way too big. So here I jump back and on the glow I am now I've changed that size. It was at five and I've changed it now down to one. Um, and then I'm jumping over and, and uh, quickly labeling these so it's a little easier to jump back and forth. And on my spill, it, I noticed it's still not shining on the ground. And so I'm jumping back to the um, table that they have on the developer website. And I thought I was following those values correctly. Um, oh, I did have my first three which is the color of your spill. I had those at all zero, which means that it wouldn't, it shouldn't show up anyway. Um, all ones would be white, so one, one, one would be a completely white spill. And so I put it at 0.9 for all three of those because I didn't want it 100% white. Um, and anyway, I, I go back and forth and, and I decided to leave that in here to kind of show you that it's just a little bit of trial and error and it takes me a minute to find the values that I actually liked. And again, just jumping up and, and doing the uh, reload current aircraft and art so that it'll pop in the new light changes. So you can see that that glow has now gotten smaller, uh, but we're still not spilling onto the runway. And that was something with the uh, the graph or the table that they give for the cone angle of that spill and I don't know if I was just reading it wrong but I was looking at like a thinking I wanted like a negative 2.4 to get the right angle I was looking for um, and for whatever reason it wasn't showing up and I believe I ended up with a 0.5 um, for that value and that ended up working pretty well but it's just kind of trial and error for what uh, specifically you want the light to look like. So here you just see I'm, I'm just quickly going through and uh, copying and duplicating a little bit so that now I'm gonna have the uh, core and the glow on both sides and I actually put the spill in the very center here and the reason for that is the spill can hurt performance if you have overlapping spill lights and so it's recommended on the developer site that you if you if the lights are close enough together um, so now you see it's now spilling onto the runway but if the lights are closer close enough together you want to use as few spills as possible so I'm using one spill to make up those two lights and with the glow and the core, you'll see it looks like I'm using two lights, but then I only have one spill uh, for X-Plane to calculate onto the runway there. And so you see just a, bu a bunch of jumping back and forth, change one value here or there to try and find the, uh, the amount of light that we want. And you'll see I wasn't getting quite the uh, spill effect that I really wanted. Um, and so I went back and forth and back and forth quite a few times. And I think finally right here at uh, 0 0.5 is when I finally found the effect I was looking for.
one thing I also noticed here was that uh, that spill light was catching the inside of the cowling and kind of lighting up the inside of the cowling which I didn't like um, so I end up actually dragging that spill light uh, forward so that it's in front of the cowling um, again you don't actually see it at the cowling you only see what it does does to the ground um, so it doesn't really matter that I placed it I end up placing it a little bit farther forward as you can see me doing right there So now I'm taking uh, some of those lights and I've duplicated them and I'm scooting them out and I'm going to do the the wingtip nav lights. Now uh, with your nav lights, using these parameterized lights, they don't all use the exact same values, which can get a little frustrating. Um, but as long as you follow the tables that are on the developer site, you're able to figure it out. But so. Here I'm changing the the name of it because it's going to have a different name. Now on your nav lights, um, they have a nav left and a nav nav right that uh, does a lot of the work for you, and they only have um, a couple little parameters. And then you have a nav spill, and you adjust that nav spill for each uh, position that you're using it in. And if they don't show up at all, um, check your parameters and check your name, because if the name isn't spelled right, it won't show up either. Another thing to note is don't, uh, don't rotate your lights. Um, that was one of the mistakes I made when I first tried to do parameterized lights. Is for the nav lights, uh, I tried to rotate them 90 degrees so they were pointing out to the side. You don't do that. So right here, I've gone zero one zero um, on this nav. Now that's that's the color. Those first three are your color. Um, your fourth one is the index, so the switch index that it's looking for. Then you have um, your size, and uh, and on your spill. Um, so on your nav spill, you'll also get a direction. Um, and I'll, I'll point that out when I get to it here in, in a second. I think it's actually right here. So on that spill, after your size, you have an X, Y, Z, and W. Um, the width is, the W is uh, the width of the cone. And uh, the X, Y, Z, and you see I, I put in the wrong color for it, but uh, the XYZ you want, that's, that's going to point your light. So after the, the uh, 10 on the spill, so I quickly change that so that 1, so red, uh, so it's all red. But then after the 10, which is our size um, on the X, now I jumped it to a negative one because it was pointing in towards the fuselage and I had it at a positive one so I jumped it to a negative one so now it should point away from the aircraft um, and that's something to keep in mind it's a one your full left is one not 90 degrees um, which is something that can get a little confusing as well but full left is is one well in this case I think it was a negative one but uh, one or negative one not 90 So there you see, now it's pointing away from the aircraft and we have the correct color. But our uh, size on that, uh, so our nav left size uh, is clearly too big. So I'll go back in and I'll change the, the value on the size of that. So that's right here. So I changed that value. I had it at 1. I just changed it to a 0 0.3. Um, and then we'll reload. And it seems like that uh, that's a much more acceptable size, I thought.
And then also I was checking with all my switches in the cockpit to make sure that the switches that were labeled for the specific lights actually worked for the specific lights. And that, that all goes into the index number with, that you use on your switch and in your parameter as well. So your index on your switch and your parameter need to match for it to work. And then I just uh, did a quick duplicate and jumped it over to the other side and then I just needed to change the color from red to green and I needed to change the angle from left to right. And then I took both of those and I duplicated and I slid them uh, aft just a little bit and these will now be my, my strobe lights. And so you just need to remember to, uh, I changed my names up on the objects just so it's easier to tell what I'm looking at. And then you also need to change the name of the actual light itself because that does matter. Um, that tells explain what it actually is. And you'll also need to um, adjust parameters because they don't all share the same parameters. So you'll see here on the strobe, I did add for the uh, first three, because the first three uh, on that spill are RGB. I just put 111 so that it's a uh, full white. And there's also two different kinds of strobe. Um, type that you can do here. You can do a strobe omni or a strobe directional and uh, so that's it if you want it to just if it's a strobe that's going to just point say to the left then you would use a directional if it's a, if it's a strobe that's say sitting on the top or bottom of your aircraft um, that should be seen from all sides and that would be a strobe omni. And then remember in your parameters here, uh, just one space between each number um, is all you need. So uh, zero space zero or, or whatever your, your parameters are, just one space in between each value. So I've got all my lights on there, I export, and then uh, I go out here and I check. And you'll see I've got strobe lights, I've got my nav lights, and I've got my landing lights. And uh, everything appears to be the right color and um, shining the right amount. And uh, I end up be being pretty happy with uh, this outcome. I hope that helps.